You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. A very, very good day, everyone. Welcome back to the program 919. Now the time here on the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. I'm your host, Randall White, coming to you from California's fantastic Central Coast. Okay, so uh, what? We're just days away now from 2014. Time to start making your vacation plans for the year to come. And the fine folks at Lonely Planet, based in the Bay Area, are helping you with that monumental task. Where will you go so that your vacation time is spent most appropriately, I guess, uh, and you're not wasting your time wandering around someplace saying, why didn't, why did we come here again? <laughs> so the Lonely Planet editors uh, each year for the last four years have laid out their top 10 picks for where to go and what to see. And the 2014 list really is pretty inclusive of just about everything from big cities to very rural uh, places, even some, uh, you know, what do you call it? Wilderness, just about. So uh, I'll, like I did last week, I'm going to go down the list here really quickly, and then we will focus in on one of the locations, which is my favorite. I would put it at number one on the list every single year, but that's just me. Number 10 is Lanai, Hawaii. This is the smallest of the main chain of islands and a, a place I have not been. I've been to several of the other islands, but I can't wait to try this now, especially after reading the piece in Lonely Planet. We do have a link to this list, by the way, at eatdrinkexplore.com under today's program summary. So uh, if you miss any of this or you want to go back and check some more you know, about it, uh, then just go right there. Easy to find. Number nine, Sun Valley, Idaho. <laughs> Fun story uh, out of there. I went to go skiing one year. I heard they had great snow. It was just before Thanksgiving and that they had opened up early. And I was like, oh, this is great. I did a road trip, drove all the way there from the Bay Area, and I got there, and they were shut down because they wanted to groom the slopes for the couple of days before the big Thanksgiving weekend. So can't wait to go there sometime when it's actually open. Number eight, Las Vegas, Nevada. Enough said. Number seven, Cumberland Island, Georgia. That's a new one to me. Number six, Kansas City, Missouri. I think you got to like barbecue if you go there. Number five, and good music. Number five, the Jersey Shore. We all know that. Uh, I mean, good and bad from television. Number four, California's Central Coast. That's what we focused on last week. Familiar to you all. Number three, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, my favorite city behind San Francisco and Chicago. Number two, Yosemite National Park. That's where we're headed today. And then number one. Grand Rapids and the Lake Michigan Gold Coast. So uh, you can read more about how that landed in the number one slot at the link on our website. But let's go to number two right now. And the woman who wrote that piece and the California Central Coast piece that we focused on last week is Sarah Benson, a writer for LonelyPlanet.com. Hello, Sarah. Welcome back to the program. Hi, it's great to be back this week. Yeah, so... Okay. I don't even know where to begin with Yosemite, how much I love it. My parents uh, took us there when we were growing up, and I don't know if it's those childhood memories or the just sheer awe of it all when you come through the tunnel, the tunnels into the park, but that's got to be my favorite place in the world. I never get tired of it either. Mm -mm. You know, I, you know what my favorite thing to do is? It's to take people there that have never been before and then watch their reaction as they see it for the first time. I've had people tell me that it feels unreal, that it looks like something that was, you know, invented by a movie studio. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it It's just unreal. Uh, one of my favorite comments by a park ranger there one time was, uh, and it's a joke I think that gets used quite a bit, but uh, the park ranger said, oh, I had somebody come up to me and tell me one time, I only have one day to spend in the park. What should I do? And the park ranger said, go down to the river and cry. Because <laughs> you only have one day. Uh, so how did you narrow it all down to tell people what to see in Yosemite? Well, you know, Yosemite is somewhere I've been going to ever since I first moved to California after college and felt that same sense of awe, you know, mm -hmm. when I first saw 
uh, when I first hiked the Mist Trail up beside Nevada oh, yeah. and Vernal Falls. And uh, I actually returned to the region. I worked as a park ranger for a while and got to know things kind of behind the scenes. So wow. Yosemite is a place I'm passionate about. Wow, you were a park ranger there, huh? I was actually a park ranger in Kings Canyon, which is yeah. also in the Sierra, just south of Yosemite, another great destination. But it doesn't quite have the star power of Yosemite. Which is which is one reason I, I love Kings Canyon, Sequoia uh, National Parks there. And uh, what, I really wanted to go there when I owned an RV and just never made it. But we'll, uh. yeah, we'll go there soon. At any rate, um, so I guess the first stop with Yosemite has to be the valley. It is. And, you know, everybody makes that their first stop for good reason. It's a great place to get oriented. It's where all the waterfalls are. Mm-hmm. In summer, you can float along the river through the valley. It's the start of so many hiking trails. You know, the museum and the visitor center with its dis- kid-friendly displays and free film. It really is, you know, for good reason, everyone's first stop. Of course, that means it's crowded beyond belief in summer, mm-hmm. but, you know, there are ways to get around that going early in the day or late in the day, um, using the shuttle system. But, yeah, Yosemite Valley is definitely the place to start, I would say. And it's winter right now. I can't recommend the park more this time of year. It's interesting. A lot of people don't think about going to Yosemite in winter, but there's a lot to love from cross-country skiing along Glacier Point Road or learning to downhill ski with your kids at at, uh, Badger Pass, which was actually California's very first alpine ski resort. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. To uh, kicking back with a drink by the big grand roaring fireplaces in the Iwani Hotel. There's a lot to love in Yosemite during winter. I went to Yosemite one winter, and we were sitting out in front of our cabin, and it was a year that we were actually getting precipitation, <laughs> and there was <laughs> there were some big uh, cornices of snow and ice that were building up uh, right at the at the top of these towering cliffs. Mm-hmm. And every now and again, you would hear this like rumble, like thunder, <laughs> as uh, they would snap off and you know cascade down the side of the granite walls. It's really spectacular. Something you would never see in the summertime. Exactly. Another thing you would never see in the summertime in Yosemite Valley itself is, I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but in in late February, um, there's an effect called the firefall effect on horsetail falls in the valley where the setting sun for about seven days in late February hits this waterfall in Yosemite Valley just perfectly that looks like the waterfall is a river of flowing gold. Talk about movie sets. I mean. <laughs> no, seriously. I, now, that's in February because I haven't seen it. I've seen a lot of pictures of it, but I've never seen it personally. Yeah. The angle of the setting sun hits just in about the third week of February. You can go onto the park website and kind of get updates about conditions. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are a couple viewing places in the valley. You just drive the valley lo- road and look for where all the photographers have set up their tripods in the snow banks by the river. Yeah. And that's where you need to be. Sarah, have you been there since the big fire this year? I have. And? I actually went at the very tail end of the fire. I had a backpacking trip scheduled. And, you know, it it definitely has affected the park, but not as much as you might think, because a lot of it is in the backcountry away from what you can see. Mm -hmm. So although the smoke conditions this fall prevented a lot of people from going, and unfortunately a lot of people had to cancel their conditions, when you go next year, unless you're backpacking deep into the backcountry, you're not really going to see many effects. Hey, Sarah, how about last winter when the road up to Lake Tanaya opened up uh, for the first time in, I don't know, park history, I think, and uh, people were allowed to ice skate on the lake? That was incredible. You know, Yosemite, no matter how many times you've gone, it's always full of surprises. It really, it so is. So uh, my go-to list would include the mist trail, like you mentioned, and be careful when you get to the top. We've had too many tragedies as of late. Uh, when it comes to the uh, waterfall, that's Vernal Falls there, right? Yes. Yeah. And then higher up is Nevada Falls if you want to uh, keep on going. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there's rock climbing, which there is the Yosemite Mountaineering School to help teach you do it to do it right. Absolutely. They operate in the valley, and then in the summer they move up to the Tuolumne Meadows area in the high country, and uh, they teach up there as well. And if it's not for you, if uh, rock climbing's not for you to do it personally, you can always hang out in the El Capitan Meadow with a pair of binoculars and watch others. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) All right. Sarah Benson, the writer for LonelyPlanet.com's pieces on Yosemite and the Central Coast. Again, all those links available at Eat, Drink, Explore. Dot com under today's program summary. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you. 
All right, everyone, that does it for this segment. Stick around. We're back in just a moment with much, much more food, wine, and travel talk. I'm your host, Randall White. 